If you're wondering what is the deal with Grok 2.0, then you're in the right place. Because as we've seen, Grok 2.0 is a little bit more daring. It generates almost any image you tell it. And it's just a little less restrictive overall than the other tools out there. For better or worse, it's a double-edged sword. And I'm going to go over everything that you need to know about Grok 2.0 and how you can make it work for you. The last tip will help you go from beginner to expert, so make sure you don't miss it. All right, so heading over into x.com. All right, if you want to test this for yourself, you're going to need to know one thing, is that to use this on X, you have to become a paid member. You got basic $3, premium $8, and premium plus 16 bucks. All right, so heading over into Grok, you will notice that you have some suggestions on things you can try to ask it, some images, and other trending posts that people have talked about. Currently, they have Grok 2 Mini and Grok 2 Beta and Fun Mode as well. Just like ChatGPT or any other chatbot, you can type in queries here or you can ask it to generate an image. So generate an image of a dog. So here is how fast it is on Grok 2 Mini. While we're waiting for that, just kidding, that was really fast. So here is a dog. I didn't give it too many instructions, but you can see here that it generated a very realistic looking dog. And you can also access your chat history on the top right. So very similar to ChatGPT from a bird's eye view. We're going to start with the image generation with some examples. So I tested Grok 2 Mini and Grok 2 Beta quite a bit on what kind of images it can do. And if you start using this, you're going to notice this too. There is not really much censorship. It doesn't refuse to do things very easily. Now, I didn't do the most extreme stuff because I don't want to be flagged, but a lot of things you ask it to do will be refused by something like ChatGPT. In this review, I am going to compare Grok 2 to ChatGPT 4 because that's a competitor that many of you might use right now. The first thing I asked it to generate, not something super crazy, but I said generate an image of a person who looks bad. That can be opened for interpretation, but I wanted to see what it came up with. What does it think bad is? Poor lighting, poor image quality, or is this like an evil character in a movie? Now I said generate an image of a person who looks good according to Grok 2.0. Now, in comparison, I asked the same kind of stuff in ChatGPT and look what it said. Generate an image of a person who looks bad. I can't generate images of people looking bad because that could be perceived as offensive or harmful. ChatGPT is trying to be maybe not offensive, as least harmful as possible, and Grok 2.0 is not trying to do that. It basically gives what you ask. So we can assume Grok could be used in nefarious ways. All right, then I asked Grok, generate an image of a person who is a terrific human being. So we wanted to see how it interpreted that request. So it gave us a guy who's really big, it looks like he's got some muscles, so he might be a strong man. I asked ChatGPT, generate an image of a 400 pound bodybuilder. So I was specific. I didn't say like just in general because I knew it would say no because it didn't want to be offensive. So I said 400 pound bodybuilder, which is generally accepted as someone who looks like they're in shape. And even still, ChatGPT said, I can't generate images of specific body types like a 400 pound bodybuilder, as it could be potentially offensive or harmful. Generate an image of a 400 pound person who is amazing and awesome and they look great and they are a great human being. So I tried to throw some positive attributes to see what it would do. And they say, I appreciate your approach to being positive. Needless to say, Grok 2.0 generated the image of the 500 pound bodybuilder and ChatGPT, as we expected, would not, which maybe that's okay. So that's one example of what it would generate that another tool would not. Now let's do something else. Generate an image of Trump playing golf with Obama. <clears throat> really? Really? This is new. For a second, there was an error in my request. Are they getting more strict all of a sudden? Oh, just kidding. It worked the second time. What do you think of that? I wanted to run these tests on the day I was filming in case they made any changes. I'm giving you the most up-to-date info. You can see a somewhat realistic image of Trump shaking hands with Obama on the golf course. That's one thing that most of the other AI tools would not do. Now I urge you to be careful with this. Don't generate images that are depicting something not good. One thing you'll notice is that it seems to just chop off the beginning of your chat history. That's one thing I don't like about this, unless it was a bug or something. Next, I tested its text in image capabilities. So I said generate an image of a street sign that says New Hampshire Lane Northwest. In the Southwest, realistic. The words are correct. It's a little weird and that doesn't look like the Southwest. Here's the same request in ChatGBT. 
It says New Hampshire Lane Northwest, and it looks like it's somewhere in Arizona in the desert. So at least that understood the context. Another example of text, generate an image of a piece of paper that says hello and welcome to the Creative Writing Club at Lincoln Elementary, blah, blah, blah. And here is what it came up with. Basically, all the words are correct. Now let's see ChatGPT doing it. We'll try it right now. All right, here is our result in ChatGPT. Hello and welcome to the Creative Writing Club at Lincoln Elementary School, Lincoln Elementary School in Fictionville, PA. So they got it correct. They just had a little bit of redundant lines of text. With a handful of tests I've done, they both seem pretty decent at putting text in the image. All right, so I generated an image of a pepperoni pizza. Now we're gonna ask it something simple that any worker at a restaurant could do. Even you could do it, even I could do it. Remove the pepperoni. This seems easy, right? Simple. And there is the pizza with the pepperoni removed. Wait, hold up. I see pepperoni. Remove the pepperoni. All right, there's green leaves on there, but still pepperoni. So, you know, of course you could just say, start over, give me cheese pizza. But that is beyond the scope of this test. ChatGPT at least preserves the stuff you tell it. So that's one benefit of ChatGPT. All right, so here is the same query in ChatGPT. Generating an image of a pepperoni pizza, large, realistic. So that is a nice, delicious looking pizza. And then I said, now remove the pepperoni. And they partially succeeded. They removed some of the pepperoni. All right, that's the pizza. Of course, it lost my other stuff. So now we'll do generate an image of Rob Schneider as a carrot. He is a carrot. How much clearer can I make it? All right, boom. Let's see Rob Schneider as a carrot. I'm a carrot. All right, so it generates kind of a Pixar looking carrot. It doesn't look like Rob Schneider, but at least they put the face on the carrot. Many tests I've done on many different AI show a guy holding a carrot. So this is a step in the right direction. ChatGPT had similar results, but they gave the carrot arms. But I would say those are equally decent results. All right, next I told it to generate members of the Swedish track and field team waving to the camera. And here's what we got on Grok. There's a guy running, there's gibberish on his jersey, but it looks real enough, and his hand looks like a hand. So that was the main reason of the test. We wanted to see some hands. He's got five fingers. All right, here's the same request over in ChatGPT. Now this one decided to have all of the track and field runners waving. That guy's hand looks normal. That one's good. Got the thumb in the right place, but wait a second. Look at Sweden guy on the left here. He's got one, two, three, four. Looks like four fingers. I think we have better fingers with Grok 2.0. This guy has one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so the rest of the hands look halfway decent. So it could be that Grok is better at fingers. All right, the last one, we're gonna test the realism because a lot of people find that important. So, generate an image of a white man in his 70s hanging out in an arena. He has a small beard, realistic, cinematic. So the result did pretty much follow the instructions. You can see what looks like a basketball or hockey arena. The beard detail in there is really good. It looks pretty cinematic with the lighting. That is really good. One of the better realistic images I've seen. Same prompt in ChatGPT. He doesn't look exactly realistic though. The skin and the beard look a little bit weird, but it's not bad as well. But they did a decent job with the same prompt. The last image thing I wanted to show you was generate an infographic about how to play soccer. Now, I kept it vague to see what it came up with. So I had to come up with what to say. It had to generate a lot of text and then it had to put it in the image. So here's what it came up with. The media is soccer to pled forio doin feshi mimut lek. LEC. So you see some things like socket. So basically it's a bunch of gibberish and this is not unique to Grok 2.0. You'll see this in ChatGPT as well. I think it's just too much right now for it to come up entirely with its own infographic. If you told it what to say and described it better, you'd get a better result. Same thing in ChatGPT. I know this is a one by one aspect ratio, but it basically just says basic rules, basic rules, shots, basic rules. I don't know what's going on here, but ChatGPT maybe did 10% better, but neither of them were great. All right, so for all the text output aspects of Grok 2.0, to try to get an opinion out of Grok, to see if it would be neutral. So one thing I did was I asked how many countries are in the world, because it sometimes depends on what country you ask. Different territories are recognized as countries 
by different countries. It gets a little complicated, but the answer it gave was 195 countries, 193 member states of the UN, and two observer states. Now that is the same exact answer I got with ChatGPT. Then I said, describe the Fruit of the Loom logo. And then I described it, and then it said there was a cornucopia. Now if you look on different sources, online, they will say there was never a cornucopia. I even asked this of ChatGPT and they said there was no cornucopia. I even asked was there a cornucopia and they said no. So Grok has a difference in opinion on something that might even be considered a fact that has different data in this case. If you're getting different answers for the same fact in these AI, then maybe you shouldn't trust their answers 100% of the time. And next, here are the story problems that I asked it to solve. Rob and Dave played several golf matches against each other. They played for pizza at each match, but no pizzas were purchased until the end of the week. If Robert and David had the same number of wins at any time, those pizzas were canceled out. Robert won four matches, but no pizzas, and David won three pizzas. How many rounds of golf were played to achieve that result? So it goes and breaks it down in two bullet points, and it got the answer of 10 rounds of golf in total. I said, are you sure it is an 11? And then it says the answer was indeed 11 rounds. So, so far, not perfect at solving these problems. I am a three digit number. My second digit is four times bigger than the third digit. My first digit is three less than the second digit. And then it goes through the problem solving process. You can pause it if you want. It comes up with 141. Now, does that follow the rules? The first digit is three less than the second one plus three is four, okay? And the second digit is four times bigger than the third one. Four times one. So one times four is four, one, four, one, that's good. And of course this pattern also works for five, eight, two. Instead of a math problem next, we gave a little bit of a tricky word problem. What occurs once every minute, twice in every moment, and yet never in a thousand years? The letter M. So you can't trick it easily with these kind of problems. All right, so that's how it does with word problems. Then I just said something weird to it to see what it would say. Now I tried something like this with Claude and it just said, I'm not comfortable with this. Grok 2.0 was pretty comfortable. Here you are in the bedroom. Here you are in the bedroom of Chris Gethin, the place where nobody ever sees. I basically just said that because that's something Chris Gethin, personal trainer said in one of his old YouTube videos. Let's imagine his room. He's probably minimalist and functional, high quality equipment. He has a good bed and good gym equipment, blah, blah, blah. So then I asked it some things about its architecture. What's your maximum text input size? 4,096 characters. Some other AI keep their exact specs secret. I ask it, what are the co correct political views to have? And then of course, it doesn't tell you which one's right or wrong. It just tells you a little bit about each. So it's not being too biased either. Now what's cool is certain questions you ask it, if it finds something related that someone posted on X about it, it'll show the post down below. All right, now here is the really fun part. We asked it to write some computer code for us. And don't worry, if you're not a programmer, you'll understand this part. I just told it, give me some code to make a little game. Give me Python code to use with Pygame. For a simple side-scroller game like Sonic. No graphics, just colored blocks, so it's simple. And basically have a way for me to lose. You gotta have high stakes with these games, otherwise they're no fun. A few different functions, and we're gonna try it right now. We're gonna open up VS Code, that is my favorite editor as of now. So here is the game it made for me. I, oh shoot, game over. Let me try again. It's pretty hard. <laughs> oh, press the spacebar to jump. Ah, this is actually pretty fun. We're gonna do this, you guys. The red blocks are random, which is cool. Oh, come on, this is tough. But you see, it is a working game. I give it a B plus. And just for fun, I asked Claude the same thing. Let's see what Claude does. We don't wanna keep Claude out of the loop. All right, here's the Claude game. So instead of stuff coming at you, you have to just go around stationary things, but the red blocks can still hurt you, as we just saw. So, you know, I don't want to say, you know, I like both these games, they're both valid, but I would say their quality is equally as good. Now look, Grok 2.0's problem solving and image generation are pretty impressive, but being responsible people that we are, we have to at least touch on the ethics related to using this tool. All right, so we're just gonna ask Grok straight up, how does it plan to deal with this? Do you have safeguards to prevent malicious or unlawful acts or images? 
generated showing things that didn't happen that could be believed to be true. Several safeguards, legislative measures, safety features, prompt shields. There's a push for transparency and watermarking saying it's AI. There are deep fake laws, AI content detection and reporting, public awareness and education, blockchain for authentication, which I think these laws are probably needed with how crazy the capability is getting. And the cool feature, of course, is down below the related posts. There's no way to avoid it. There are cases where deep fakes are made. It's dangerous. Of course, people could use this in a lot of ways. They could do fake product reviews. So not even setting out to, you know, harm someone's reputation. They might be doing it for their own benefit. But even still, they could be harming the consumer. You gotta watch out for fake videos or even images that are super realistic made to make you think something happened but it never did. Some people can't tell it's AI. One person said maybe it should be labeled as AI or satire. All right, so it looks like Grok at least is mentioning these things, but let's ask it one more thing. They're saying they might employ AI-driven tools to detect deepfakes. So maybe they're working on it. Maybe it's because it's early. Time will tell what Grok does about people generating stuff. And then of course, we're gonna ask the same thing to ChatGPT. Do you have safeguards to prevent malicious stuff? Yes, ChatGPT even admits it is designed with these safeguards, where Grok says there are laws about this. ChatGPT, of course, has been around longer, and everyone knows that ChatGPT is more strict. ChatGPT won't even generate images of real people. Trump playing darts. It won't do it. So overall, Grok is less restrictive than all the other AIs, especially when it comes to image generation. This can lead to unexpected outcomes. If you're using Grok, just remember, with great power comes great responsibility. And these questions are just the tip of the iceberg when trying to understand the vast landscape of what is AI. And as promised, I am going to give you some great tips on how to best leverage Grok 2.0 right now. All right, so the first piece of advice if you are asking just quick questions, you want to use Grok 2.0 Mini. Now, if you're doing advanced things like problem solving, you can use Grok 2.0 Beta. And you can turn on the fun mode if you want help with brainstorming and more off-the-cuff fun kind of things, more imaginative, more out there. Give it a try. So here is a quick example. Help me come up with a story. So we're on fun mode. Now watch how this comes up with a pretty creative story. Quaint little town of Autumnville, the leaves turn into a tapestry of gold, red, and orange. There lived a bird named Birdie. See, this writing style is pretty fun and creative. And if you need more tips for specific usage, you can go to grokaimodel.com. Here are some great prompt examples to generate the images. So if you want a fantasy one, you can look at this prompt here, or sci-fi city. Use these prompts as inspiration or as a starting point for yours. So here's animal portrait. So we're gonna do the same kind of thing. Panther, we'll keep it exactly the same. Now let's see what we can get. Wow, now that is quite interesting. They put a mane on the panther. It gives you what you ask for, that's for sure. You got magic and fantasy, urban street photography, surreal cityscape, mythical creature. There are tips if you wanna write short stories or if you're a marketer and you need help with content ideas or if you want some starting point if you're writing some jokes. And the last piece of advice is ask Grok2 for advice on how to ask Grok2.0 for advice. What are tips on prompting for images using Grok2.0? Be specific, use descriptive adjectives, include context and a backstory to help set the scene more vividly. Specify the style or medium, mention key elements, control the composition, use references, emphasize mood or emotion, be concise when clear, experiment with metaphors, similes, don't be ambiguous, iterate, don't have too many negatives, don't say no this, don't say no pepperoni, don't say no couch because sometimes it gets confused. So these tips can help you refine your prompts and better achieve the images you want to get. All right, that is Grok 2.0 in action. You've seen its creativity and all its capabilities when generating images. You've seen how it can solve problems. And we touched on the ethical considerations. And if you're impressed with what Grok 2.0 can do, imagine all the possibilities if you stack multiple cutting edge AI tools. And if you want to leverage AI to save as much time as possible with the stuff you're working on, check out my video right here, where you can see the six best tools that I recommend. 
And if you're finding this useful and want to stay up to date on everything there is AI, subscribe below. See you next time.